Listen. Legendary table. <laughs> yes, and <laughs> if y'all out there have some time to grab some popcorn, I feel like this is the right table for it. Hmm. I'd be happy just sitting back and watching. About halfway through the field in the $40,000 buy mystery bounty tournament at the Triton Poker Series in Monte Carlo, it falls around to Phil Ivey, one of the absolute best poker players in the world, and he decides to play the 7-2 offsuit. You may wonder why. Well, normally, you would fold the 7-2 offsuit, but we are playing a very odd blind structure. We are playing 10,000, 15,000 with a 15,000 big blind ante. So in this scenario, when it folds around to Phil Ivy, he has to put in 5,000 to try to win 45,000, which means he needs us to realize one ninth of this pot from out of position with a 7-2 offsuit. Now, 7-2 offsuit's not a great hand. It's going to be in bad shape. Maybe it has, I don't know, 28% equity, 35% equity, depending on how it goes. It's not good. But even if he has only 20% equity, that is one fifth of the pot. So while he will realize his equity poorly from out of position, because if he does flop, let's say, bottom pair, he checks his opponent bets and he calls, and then on the turn he checks and his opponent bets again, maybe he folds, right? He's not going to realize all of his equity. He's still going to realize way more than one ninth of the pot. So yeah, you don't like the 7-2 offsuit, but if there's ever a time to play it properly and profitably in a poker tournament, this is it. Phil Ivy limps. Jan Zarens, Graf Tekel Online, world-class player. He's been around a very long time. He has to check the 9-7 offsuit. We're playing about 21 big blinds deep. Let's head to the flop. Why actually was it that we had so many weird times? We just both didn't like to fold? Oh, yeah. Ivy's sitting yeah, back and watching. Yeah, yeah, you just... How? Oh. I don't know. Yeah, One foot out bit, the door. Flopping bottom two on the 9-7 deuce against top two Come on. of Jan Zerens out of the big blind, limped pot, 45,000 in the middle. <laughs> Not like this. Not like this. Flop comes, 9-7-2, two. two hearts. Phil Ivey is almost dead despite the fact that he has two pair. You may think, bet Phil Ivey in general, don't be results oriented friends, you typically want to bet with a lot of your strong hands because you want to get money in the pot. However, you want to make sure that you check raise some hand some portion of the time, and two pair is a pretty good hand to put in the check raise with. That said, I think on this very draw heavy board, you'd probably just rather bet yourself because if you bet, you will get raised some portion of the time. And I do think this board should connect pretty well with Ivy's limping range in general. So he should have a whole lot of medium strength hands and draws. That said, checking is perfectly fine looking to check raise, especially if you think your opponent in position is going to be highly inclined to bet frequently when you check to them. Because to be fair, this board should also connect pretty well with their range. Ivy checks. Jan Zarens bets 25,000. Let's see what Ivy does with his two pair. I feel like How does he find, like, the call there? 25k and Ivy, understandably so, come in with the check raise on such a wet ball texture. So many straight draws, combo draws available. Unblocking top pair as well, value to be had. Ivy, of course, puts in the check raise. At this point, the board is very draw heavy. And Ivy has a hand that is almost always good right now, not this time, but almost always good and highly likely to get outdrawn by all sorts of draws that are available. We discussed this concept thoroughly in the Tournament Masterclass at PokerCoaching.com on a board where there's a two flush or a two straight available, and there is no straight or flush available currently. These are boards where you're going to want to play very aggressively with hands that are almost always good but vulnerable, like bottom two pair, a lot of your top pairs, etc. So Ivy knows how to play good poker. He puts in the check raise to 85000 Let's see what Jans does in position with his top two pair. Maria, is this an inevitable <laughs> elimination? I think like so. It hands. feels like <laughs> when Jans just continues here, there's just going to be so many turn cards that Ivy... A lot of you may think, Jans should just rip it in. The board is draw heavy, right? And it is. And to be fair, I don't think ripping it in would be all that bad given Ivy started off kind of short stacked. However, however, Top two pairs a hand that certainly doesn't mind just calling because you really block your opponent's calling range. 
if he had, let's say, 7-2 instead, I would love a shove because then it's kind of likely that Ivy has top pair that will check raise and then call it off. But when you have a 9 and a 7 in your hand, it's kind of difficult for Ivy to have a whole lot that can call it off, which makes it more likely Ivy has either a high equity draw, which is going to put all of its money in anyway, or some sort of low equity draw like a gut shot. And if Ivy does have just a gut shot straight draw, like let's say 10-6, uh, this is the spot where you really want to keep him in the pot. Yes, he does have some outs, but it's not all that many. And Ivy's going to feel highly inclined to bluff on a whole lot of turns. So even though Jans is a little bit vulnerable in this scenario, he definitely wants to call and force Ivy to stay in the pot with all of his junky bluffs. He calls, as he should, and we head to the turn. He's going to shove, just trying to... I don't know, I think it was just like, you know, somehow the distribution... Shut out, out like some of the other hands sick. that... Where you wind could up have a lot of equity still will person. get called by so like, nine x's as like there are a lot of different draws possible spr a little over one it doesn't matter as oh, as bricky as it gets, yeah. right? If I call, he has it. If I fold, I see he bluffed okay. on the stream. It's oh. like yeah, all in. Then that's the sickest. Snap. One card to come. Cool. Ivy nice looking for a duck as you hear Aaron's express just how much of a nasty one that is. The turn is an absolute disaster for Phil Ivy because no draws come in. That makes Ivy's hand the effective nuts at this point. He rips it in. Again, going for this large bet on the very dynamic board. Jans with his top two pair of course calls, and Ivy is going to need to improve. Let's see if he does. And yeah, then it starts to a rare grimace a from yeah, Ivy as well. Yeah. Nothing yeah. short of a cold deck as we lose Ivy hand one at this feature table, 685,000 chip pot. <laughs> Going Jans' yeah, way. This table just got a little less legendary. It did. Phil Ivey, one of the most legendary players in the world, does not improve, and he is out the door. Phil Ivey, for those who do not know, has had one of the longest, most vibrant poker careers of anyone on the planet today. And what I want to know is what do you think is the biggest key to longevity in poker? Take a second, think about it, and let me know what you think in the comment section below. And I'll be right back with what I think is the most important key to longevity in poker. Longevity in poker is actually a pretty big topic. I could make a video on that topic alone. However, I think an important key to longevity is to love what you are doing. If you do not love playing poker, a long career playing poker is probably not in your future. Now, I realize if you do something all day, every day, that's fine whenever you're first starting it. The honeymoon phase is always amazing, but six, eight, 10, 20 years into poker, you're not gonna wanna play poker 15 hours a day, every day. When I was a young kid, I would literally play or study poker for about 16 hours a day. I did this for three years straight and I loved it. But fast forward 15 more years, well, I don't play nearly as much poker as I used to. However, when I, Jonathan Little, go to play poker, I love it because now I don't play 15 hours a day anymore like I used to. So. I don't know what will work for you, but I know that if you want to succeed at anything at a super high level long term, you have to love it. And maybe that means not playing poker quite so much. Maybe that means playing different formats. Maybe that means playing different uh, strategy types. Maybe that means learning from different players. I don't know what it means for you personally, but you need to find a way to love poker and more importantly, stay in love with poker forever if you want to have a good long-term career. That's me for today. If you enjoyed today's video, click the like and subscribe button below. Click the notification bell down there. Good luck in your games. Have fun. And if you make two pair with a 20B blind stack, I sure hope you don't lose. I'll talk to you next time.